David always does this. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. As David said, most people know that I have served as the treasurer for the church. It's actually been since 1990, not 1923. But in these last 25 years, we've seen our budget grow from $300,000 a year. And I might add that very first year, I was faced with cutting our budget $60,000 from the year previously to where we are over $650,000 a year this past year. We've seen growth and decline and regrowth in many of our programs. <coughs> we built a family life center to increase our worship opportunities. We started two new worship services. We've maintained our sanctuary and other buildings to preserve our heritage. Recently, we purchased additional property to ensure that future growth can be achieved, something that I think all of us want at some point in time. We started a ministry with the Shriners Hospital for families with children who need support through very difficult times. All of these things that we've done in the last 25 years, we've done with very little growth in the number of our members, possibly even a decline. Last year, a priority for us was to find someone to lead our contemporary music and participate in the worship formation. We accomplished that. My question to you today is what do you want us to accomplish next year? What do you want us to accomplish in the next two years and the next five years? In part, I have to read usually when I get in a formal setting. <laughs> I said that we believe that we want to grow, but what exactly does that mean? In terms of staff, do we want to hire a youth director? How about a part-time receptionist? Several years ago, we renovated the fishbowl for just that reason, yet we still have not hired one. Do we want to spend money on evangelism in order to get our message out to those who don't know who we are? Do we want to not just maintain our property but take preventative measures to ensure that it remains the treasure that it is and always has been? Do we want to increase our outreach levels so that we can help those who cannot help themselves and not just fund programs that are only for our church family? And if we want to do these things, how do we go about doing them? How do we prioritize them? Those of you who have known me for several years, particularly if you participated on the board, know that I've been trying to find someone, anyone, to take over the treasurer's job. Something happened that drastically changed my mind on this. You see, several people in this church came to me and said that they would be willing to participate on the financial oversight committee. That seems like such a simple thing. But it meant all the difference in the world to me. All of a sudden, I had some support that I didn't have before. There were many more eyes reviewing our financials. Now, one of the bad things about this is, is that it means there were many more questions that I had to answer. But most importantly, there were many more people to help make decisions about the finances of this church. Now, the lesson learned here, the takeaway, is that the more people that participate and take active roles, the better the church experience is for all of us. This applies not only to our financials, but all aspects of our worship. Sitting on that pew on Sunday is fine. That's what we want you to do. We want you here. But if that is all you are doing, you are missing out on the most important part of being a Christian. And that's living and working as a church family. We want to bring the story of Jesus to as many people as we can. The ultimate reason for existing as a church is just that. Youth programs, outreach programs, worship experiences. All of these are ultimately to bring people to Christ. So get out of those pews and start participating. It doesn't matter how old you are, how long you've been here. It doesn't matter how young you are, and if you just walk through the door. If you don't know where to start, ask me. 
I guarantee you I can find somebody that needs your skills. And if you are asked to participate, don't say no immediately. God just might be talking to you. Think long and hard and ask God for help on this. He's probably going to try to get you out of your comfort zone. But if you are doing what he wants you to do, just how long do you think you'll really be uncomfortable doing his task? Now I want to close with a couple of thoughts. Growing a church takes money and effort. It's a hard fact, but it's true. Hiring a youth director, a temporary receptionist part-time, performing preventative maintenance on our buildings, increasing our outreach programs, restarting our evangelism programs, and note I said restarting because we're not doing it right now. All of this requires our time and our dollars. We currently have 200 families that are giving to this church at this point in time. My thought here is that if everyone gave $500 extra a month, that's, uh, excuse me, $500 a year, pardon me, y'all. That would make me say that. $500 a year. Let's put this in, in a range that we can all accept here, baby. That's $42 a month. That's $10 a week. We could raise $100,000 to begin our growth programs if we could achieve that. Now I want you to think about that. $42 a month, $10 a week. What could we accomplish as a church family if we did that? Do you think we could hire a youth director? Do you think we could hire a part-time receptionist? Could we increase our outreach programs? Could we restart our evangelism programs? What could we accomplish in one year? Or in two years? Or in five years? Thank you for your time and your attention. <laughs>